Hello, my name is Brittany D. I am a psychic medium and spiritual teacher. My divine purpose is to assist in the expansion of the collective consciousness and to help you become more connected with the divine. This is a space to remember all that you truly are and ignite the possibilities of your highest potential. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back for another episode of the Addicted Household Recovery. I'm so grateful for this space. Truly, guys, truly. So today I want to talk about taking care of yourself first and like how that is, how you can be in your most divine light and be of most service to everyone and everything around you. And it feels selfish, right? Because we've been told that it's selfish, but it's actually the most like selfless thing you can do because it's usually not easy to put yourself first. Usually it's like, fuck. But what you can do is create a ripple of of truth and divinity and honor Um yeah, and respect. So I've been feeling really, really grateful for my brother, which I almost um, labeled this episode, can you be grateful for your abuser? Because I'm pretty mind blown right now that I'm actually grateful for the first time in my life for my brother. And it's not really for his abuse, but it's for who he is in this now moment. And that's because, you know, in my previous episode, I was talking about how I was playing victim and I was spewing all of these resentments that I had been holding in myself for years um, onto my brother, not necessarily verbally, but energetically. I was just like, here's all your shame. Take it back. You know, you are the one that did all these things. And, you know, I was talking with my coach just earlier today and I was like, it's this gray line area because I was a child. So it's like, no, you don't get to abuse a child. And then it just hit me. And I was like, he was a child. (laughs) And I didn't realize that because I lost my father, like my brother naturally and organically stepped up as the father role basically immediately, like starting at seven years old, he's, my mom said he started like, you know, doing things just around the house and trying to help her. And like, like he just naturally and organically stepped into that role. And so I've always perceived my brother in this fatherly way. And so then it created this like, well, you shouldn't have done this to me because I was a child. And it just whacked me in the face today that he was a child too. And that it makes sense why he's like, what do you want me to apologize for being human? What do you want me to apologize for learning? Like, you know, of course it's not okay to put your hands with people. Of course it's not okay to, to steal and to lie and to cheat and and all these things. But in the same breath, you know, this really just came to me. It dawned on me because I had this client that came at me. It felt like out of nowhere. And, you know, part of me wants to do the people pleasing thing where I like apologize and I'm like, Oh, sorry for being human. Sorry that I overgave and then was resentful. Sorry that I people please instead of took care of myself. Like I I am, I, I do recognize my actions. I do recognize that instead of being in my power and instead of you know, allowing her to just come to me, I was like nudging her and I'm like, dude, you should really do this program. Like this is going to change your life. There's a lot of opportunity here, you know? And that nudging felt like a sense of convincing. And, and I just, I really betrayed myself. I put her on like a super low payment plan and like just all these things. I really, really betrayed myself in so many ways. And I, you know, I can't speak for her, but I think that she did the same thing was betraying herself or people pleasers, you know, kind of did a dance and, and, you know, and I'm glad that she, you know, didn't hold that resentment anymore and communicated with me. Of course, I wish that she would have communicated in a way that was more effective, that was more respectful, that was more honorable to the work that we had done and the connection that we have. 
and have had. But, you know, I have no control over that. And I also know what it's like, right? Because I just did that to my brother in a different way, not verbally, but energetically. And, you know, I did. I took full responsibility and accountability for my part. I was like, okay, I see my overgiver. I see my people pleaser. I see what I did here, you know, and I own that. I truly own that. But there wasn't anything in me that felt the need to apologize because I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry for being imperfect. I'm not sorry for being human. I'm not sorry for growing and learning and making mistakes and having a blind spot. And now I see it. And of course, like, you know, I recognize that it hurt your feelings, but we're, we're both adults here. And it hurts my feelings that, that, that I even have a client that feels this way, of course, but that doesn't, I'm not going to make it mean anything about me. I'm not going to make it mean anything about her. I'm not going to make it. it I, I, and maybe that's like a level of detachment. I don't think that's unhealthy. It's like just, just detaching for your own well-being for your own. If I got upset over every mistake, every place that I learned and grew and made a mistake, if I like made that this catastrophic thing where I have to cry my eyes out and and I used to do that to myself. I did that to myself for years and I called it healing and it was masochistic. It was self-destructive and self-sabotaging to judge my human experience where I learn, grow and make mistakes and, and be all upset. And I have to like go into the depths and I have to cry my eyes out and I have to do all these things because I'm such a horrible person because I, you know, totally convinced her to sign like, no, I'm a human being that was learning and growing. And I genuinely felt that there was a huge thing here. And now I realize there was a huge thing here, but it wasn't what I thought it was. And that's okay. Like I, I I see why my brother is like, dude, I'm not, I don't owe anybody anything. I don't owe anybody any apologies. I don't owe anybody anything. You don't owe anybody anything for being a human, for being, I mean, if you feel truly sorry and truly apologetic, then express that, but don't force yourself to feel sorry or to feel apologetic for something that you don't like. I'm not, I can't do that anymore. I can't just apologize because I feel like I owe someone an apology. Like, no, I'm, I'm, a human being learning and growing and making mistakes. And I would spend my entire life sitting around giving apologies. If I gave, if I gave apologies for every single thing that I did, that was learning and growing, like I would spend every day making apologies and I don't need to just sit around apologizing for being human and apologizing for being imperfect and apologizing I don't owe anybody anything. You don't owe anyone anything. God, it, God, God doesn't even owe you anything just to be totally real. Like, I, I don't mean that in, in an insensitive way, but like nobody owes you anything. And it was really interesting to be sitting in the position of my brother, right? This is how spirit works. And I'm just like, dude, you're like trying to corner me into giving you something that I don't genuinely feel. And I'm not going to do that. You don't get to control me. You don't get to manipulate me. You don't get to poke me into a corner to do something that I don't feel. And yeah, it just, it, it's, it's really, really, really interesting to be sitting in the shoes and to see, you know, I, I really respect and honor my brother. I really respect and honor that he has chosen to love himself so deeply that it his field is impenetrable. And so immediately your projections just go womp, womp, womp. And I'm not saying that he's perfect, right? He's, he's a human. I'm sure that there's places where his field gets penetrated at times. I know that I've done it to him in the last year. I've seen his field get penetrated, you know, but like on a, on a, 90% basis, you know, like there's the things here and there, 
But like on a general, a dominant basis, you can't penetrate my field because I know I'm God's child. I know that I'm inherently worthy. I know that I'm inherently lovable. I know that I'm inherently the creator of my reality and I have the power within me at every moment of time. And I don't owe anyone anything for being a human being, for growing, learning, and making mistakes. And you know, I go back and forth about my mom because she was the adult in the situation, right? And to that is a that is a borderline, but I also am a mother now, right? It's a gray area because I am a mother now and I'm not going to be perfect the whole way through. And I am going to do my best to take accountability and to take ownership and to apologize when I truly feel that my daughter deserves an apology. But I also want her to learn that you're a human and you don't need to, you don't owe anyone anything. You're not, you don't need to go around apologizing for every single thing that you do that is, means being a human being. And so I'm just really grateful. I'm really grateful to be anchored into my power and my ability to create and to have a field that is so in, you can't penetrate. And I'm really grateful that my abuser ended up being the one to show me what that really means. Talk about some next level alchemy. Talk about a spiritual journey, right? Like, holy guacamole. So just know that it's possible for the person who hurt you the most in this life to become someone who inspires you more than anybody else. <laughs> That's pretty wild, but it's, it's the reality of, of what I'm experiencing. And I know that he's not perfect and I know that I'm not perfect and I know that none of us are perfect, but I'm not aiming for perfection. I'm aiming for being exactly who I truly am. And I don't have to apologize for that. I don't have to, I don't owe anyone anything for being who I truly am. So just really being anchored. What I'm really learning is just being really anchored in your truth. What is truly in your heart the truth will penetrate all illusions. The, the truth will penetrate all distortions and all disillusions and all these different ways that people want to view you, whether that's from, you know, and if they, if, if you, if you, let's say I went up and I attacked somebody, right. And I like yelled at them and I was like, you're the fucking problem. You did everything to me, blah, blah, blah. blah. It's all your fault. Right. And I did this blame thing. And then I walked away and then they came forward later and they were like, dude, you know, I hear you and I hear that this hurt your feelings, but you know, you don't get to speak to me that way. Then maybe that is an opportunity for you to be like, okay, I do feel sorry for that. I do feel bad about that within myself. I feel shame and I shouldn't have spoken to you that way. And I do apologize, but giving people, giving people apologies that you don't truly mean that you don't really feel in your heart is just, it's such a disservice to you. It's such a disservice to the field. And if you're not getting an apology from someone that you're desiring an apology from, and you want them to be sorry for something that they're not sorry for, don't try and poke them into a corner in order to get what you feel like you deserve or what you feel like you're owed. It's really disempowering and it's really controlling. And it's not even going to satisfy that sensation because you're going to know this is coming from a place of you're cornered now and I've poked you into this corner. It's really, it, it, what it is, is codependency. It's, it's really, really deep codependency. This is all, all of this is, but yeah, those controlling tendencies and the blaming and the victim. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's really challenging, but, um, we're making it through, we're making it through the waters. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for witnessing me. This has been such a beautiful space. There's been times where I've done this dance where I'm like, maybe I need to stop it. You know, maybe, not. and it's, it's just, I'm really grateful to continue forward and to be here and be present with you all. And, I hope to see you on the next episode. Much love. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed that episode. Please subscribe, leave a review, 
And if this was impactful for you at all, please share it with others. This is how we can help each other. Much love and namaste.